Agora TV. The world is thinking. Despite the the picture that you paint, which is not a you know particularly rosy one, obviously, but you're you're optimistic about our capacity to to come to terms with this problem and fix it. Um, Clive Hamilton's book, Requiem for a Species, of course, uh, picks up on, in a sense, that point and says, if there's a problem, it's man's, mankind's psychology that says, well, someone else will fix it. <laughs> and, 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 you know, we know that it's sure be right in Australia in terms of, uh, you know, our national attitude. How do you respond to that argument that, in fact, ultimately, we're capable of misleading ourselves uh, to oblivion? Yeah, and look, I, I, I got to say, I, someone of Clive Hamilton's stature, you can't dismiss his arguments out of hand. I mean, he has got a, a point. But when I look at human history and see the sort of things that we have overcome, the pollution issues that we've overcome, in the most adverse of circumstances, it does give you hope. You know, we did overcome the, the, you know, the, the, the 19th century problems of sewage in the streets, which must have seemed insurmountable at the time. And, you know, and having a rich to pay for them who had not much to gain compared with the poor who were dying of cholera, you know. Um, the, 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 the CFC issue that we saw now, and just in, the, in the, the, the news in the last week or so, we've seen scientists say we have definitively now overcome the ozone problem by 2048. We'll be back at you know, levels, pre-1980 levels. And so we, we have been able to act together on this. And, and, and what I see with, this, with the climate issue is we failed to agree a global treaty, fair enough. Um, to replace Kyoto. But what we've seen is individual countries acting in their own interest, for their own reason, in ways that lay the underpinnings for success. success. And the reason I spent so much time with China today is that they are central. They're the biggest polluter. They'll become the overwhelmingly biggest if action isn't taken. And when you see the plan of action they've laid out, it opens up hope that the rest of the world, the, the actions the rest of the world have to take are not entirely overwhelming. And I think that's the that's the case. So we'll, it's sort of, I guess you could say it's muddling through, but to me the foundations of success have been laid over the last two or three years through that Copenhagen process as countries have understood the issue more clearly and laid out energy policies then that, um, that have been uh, given us the capacity, or will by mid-century certainly, give, no, sorry, mid-decade, give us the capacity to really start reducing emissions significantly. And I think you know, if you just look back on, think of that, about the world five years ago, you know. Um, five years ago, Al Gore's An Inconvenient Truth hadn't been released and climate change wasn't a great issue with the public. You know, we've come a huge way over those, those five years. And five years from now, the world's going to look very different. Photovoltaics are going to be near our parity price with coal electricity, you know, by that point. Who knows where electric cars will be, but I'm sure they're going to be a long way further uh, along than they are today. So, you know, the, 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 the foundation of success is being laid. Um, we're not seeing the huge shift yet, but I, I do believe that we, we, we've got it within, it to, within us to, um, to limit CO2 below 450 parts per million and move on to a much cleaner energy future.